testify to the word of God and faith in Christ. If you look at all that's happening in the world right now, the world is hopeless. The world system is flawed. But when we look to the eternal word of God, that's where we get peace. That's where we get hope. That's where we get strength. And we're here to proclaim the good news that Jesus Christ is Lord. I would never be out here. I'm 27 years old. I would never be out here unless I really believed what I'm talking about. In 2018, I got myself into a place where things were really dark for me. And I sought God. And I prayed. And I got rid of sin. And I started to put, place my faith in the Lord. And I was desperate. I was broken. I, I know I needed help. And so I sought God. I read the Bible every day. I prayed. And I continued to pray. And after five weeks of seeking the Lord every day, He showed up. And He showed Himself in signs and wonders and miracles and power. So we're here to testify that the Word of God, the Holy Bible, is true. And no matter what's happened in your life, Jesus Christ will set you free. Praise God. If you look at, if you watch the news, you're, you're pretty much hopeless. But the Word of God is totally contrary to what the rest of the world says. Matthew chapter 5. You have heard it, that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even ta tax collectors do so. Therefore, you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. The Bible calls us to love. No matter what's happening in the world, no matter what the devil's done to you, there's nothing too big for God to do in your life. And we're here to proclaim our hope in Jesus Christ and that you have an eternal soul. Listen, this world is passing away. We have a soul that will live forever, our spirit. We're gonna go to one of two places for eternity, my brothers and sisters, either heaven or hell. And the Bible says that broad is the road that leads to destruction. And narrow is the path that leads to life. And Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And you know what? I need to, to figure that out for myself. I wanted to know, is this really true? Because I was in a place of desperation. That if this faith in God thing was going to work, I needed it to work. And I wanted nothing to do with religious people. I wanted nothing to do with people because I didn't trust them. I was hurt by them. People stole from me cheated me out of money but I placed my faith in God and he brought me out of my my sin out of my loneliness out of depression out of anxiety fear suicidal thoughts Jesus Christ rescued me from all of that and he'll do it for you now if we're gonna live 70 maybe 80 years what is it in the eyes of eternity what do 70 or 80 years compare to an eternity in paradise with God or in a devil's hell the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son to die and that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life praise God many people are up at night sleepless hopeless worried about what's gonna happen scared about what they see on the news because we're living in the, the last hour of time but Jesus said peace I leave with you my peace I give you I do not give to you as the world gives do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid Amen. the peace of Jesus Christ surpasses all understanding praise God and you can't have the peace of Christ 
if you're not born again. Jesus was talking to one of the religious leaders of his day. And he said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Your spirit inside you. The Bible says that we're dead even as we live. That if we're not born again by the Holy Spirit, we cannot see the kingdom of God. It's the work of the Holy Spirit through faith in Jesus Christ that has the power to save your life. And in this world, look at this beautiful city of Boston. Some of the best hospitals, some of the best universities in the entire country, some of the best commerce and businesses. But none of it is a substitute for the power of Christ in your heart. Because what's gonna happen? The businesses will all pass away. The hospitals will pass away. We're not living in this world forever. But without our faith in God, what do we have? The highest rate of suicide God bless you, is among the God wealthy bless you, and the learned. The people with the most knowledge, the people with the most money. Because even if you amass millions of dollars for yourself, without the presence of God and the power of Christ, you're still left empty. And the Bible says that if you place your faith in God, He'll do something for you. That He'll change your life. That He'll take out that heart of stone that is angry, that is bitter, that is against people, that hates, that is jealous, that is continually sorrowful. And He'll put His Spirit in you. And He'll give you new life. And the Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So two things. The Bible says that we are to believe that God is who he says he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Do you know that God wants to bless you? God's not angry at you. God loved you so much before the beginning of time that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for you and for me. The Bible says that we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. In 2018, when I was seeking God, he answered one of my prayers and I said, God, okay, I believe that was you, but if, if that was you, can you please confirm it in a vision or in a dream? I had never had a vision before, but I had heard of them. And two days later, at about five o'clock in the morning, God gave me a vision where the sky opened up and I saw the brightest light you could ever behold. If you look at the sun right now, you can look at the sun. But this light was different. When God spoke to me in that vision, I saw a, a light so bright that I couldn't keep my eyes open to it. And then I felt the power of God hit me in my body. Terrifying. It felt like it felt like lightning. Like God Himself had placed his finger on me. And I learned that day that we are to fear God. But he, that he's faithful too. I asked him to confirm the prayer that he was so so graceful to, to answer for me. And so that doesn't happen every day. But the Bible says that you and I have the same way to God through Jesus Christ and by our faith. God bless you, man. That if we, talk, if, if we place our faith in God and say, God, okay, if you're the Almighty, if you are who, who that guy says you are, I want to know you too. And the Bible says, when you come to God in childlike faith, that he'll make you new. He'll give you a new heart, he'll give you a new mind, and he'll change your entire life. I work in a car dealership and a woman came in and she told me about her life. She said, I've been in four car accidents and none of them were my fault and my car got totaled. And I can't keep a job and I'm getting evicted. And I thought in my mind, this woman's under a curse and she doesn't know what a curse is. She doesn't know about spiritual matters. But it wasn't the place to tell her right then and there. She came in six months later and she verbally told me, she said, Robert, 
I feel like I'm under a curse. So she opened the door. So I said, miss, I said, a curse is no joke. I said, God changed my life radically and he'll do it for you. I said, come outside, I wanna pray with you and we're gonna believe God to change your life and to break that curse off of your life. And we went outside and I said a simple prayer. I asked God to break any curse that was placed on her life by the power of the devil and by the power of sin. And that was it. Nothing happened at the time. She didn't feel the presence of God. There was no miracle that happened right in front of us. And she came back two weeks later and she said, Robert, everything is changing. I, I'm able to get the car I need. I, everything is good with my workplace. Every, everything is changing in my life. And it was by the power of prayer that we addressed the things in our life. And she just, with childlike faith, came to God and said, I need help because there are things at work in my life. Now, the Bible says, tells us not to love the world. It's okay to have material possessions, but we're not to worship them above God in our life. And so, no matter what- Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. Where is the, where is the, in the Bible does it say not to love the world? Come on. So not, the, the world on, system on. in in First John chapter three. I love the world. John, no, 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 no. The world, the world, system, world. The world you're not, you're, the system. The world political system. The banking system. All all the powers that be that are against people, against the goodwill of men. The Bible says not to love the world in that way. But if we love God and we trust Him, money wise, He will bless us, and He desires to bless you today. No matter what you need in your life. Listen, we all come from different walks of life. And we need different things from God. And he's faithful. That if we call on him, the Bible says, if you call on me, I will answer you. Not I might answer you. Not when I'm done answering other people's prayers. He said, call on me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you not you do not know. You go in and you just praise God. Yeah, because it was I know my Bible. Hallelujah. I know, I know my Jesus Bible. Christ is Lord. I know my Bible. Jesus Christ is Lord and he will set you free. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's my church right there. And that no one comes to the Father through but through me. We love each other. So we are not to we don't love, material, love the world system, but we are to place our faith in God. Yeah. Praise God. God is holy. God is righteous. And he desires to have an intimate relationship with you. He knows every single one. The Bible says that he has the number of hairs on your head counted. That he knows you. But if you never call out to him, if you never make time for him, if you never seek him, then at that day, he will say, depart from me. I do not know you. So it's important that each and every one of us addresses eternity and say, all right, Lord, if you are who this guy says you are, I want to be saved. I want to know you. I want to be released of my troubles and have new life. I'm forgetting the name. I go to Lowell Assemblies of God. So we're, we're like Assemblies of God churches. Second Corinthians 5.17 it's, it's kind of says, If any man be in Christ, behold, he is a new yeah, creation. Yeah, yeah. Like the it's old a, things oh, have passed it's, away, and no, all no. things well, a, have become new. So if you need a new life like today, yeah. or, like, sorry, no matter what's beer. going on, oh, nice. God's no, waiting. I got to Jesus said, here. Behold, I oh, stand wow. at the Praise door God. and knock. If any man opens the door, I will come in and sup with him. Thank you, brother. Thank you, thank you. God bless you. So the message is that Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. God called me That God wants to come in and fill you with the Holy Spirit and change you from the inside out like he did with me. Street preaching is like I never lived like this for years. It gets a bad I was always going to drugs and alcohol and women and money and and chasing all the things of the world. But when it wasn't enough and I cried out to God he yeah, rescued me. He changed me. Exactly. He gave me new life. Like and that's what he wants to do for you today. And it's all passing away. Again, this world is passing away. But it's up to us to allow Christ to come into our heart. By childlike faith, 
they're like, and oh, say, God Lord, you. Like, deliver me from my sins. I see that stuff in Break the curse off of my yeah. life. Yeah. Give We're me new, new life we, and we give me the power to live for you. Okay, well, and something so supernatural like will take place when you just take that small child-like step of faith and say, God, I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and give me the power to live for you. And the Bible says when you do that, then you'll have new life. Praise God. Bless you too, bro. Again, spent a long time not knowing God, not caring, not reading the Bible, not going to church. Because religion cannot do anything for a person. The religious system is what Jesus came to destroy. Jesus taught people to respect women in his day, which was not a thing. And so God is for all people of every color, every every race every two genders god is for you not against you and he wants to bless you and he's forgiving and the bible says that that without the power of christ we can't live for god that it's impossible we we're born into a world of sin and and what pleases the flesh is contrary to what pleases the spirit but if you call on the name of the lord you will be saved praise god the Holy Spirit and a relationship with God is what, what we truly long for, what we truly desire. It's not more money. It's not more education. But it's relationship with God. The Bible says in Galatians 5, the acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft. Hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God and the word of God calls us to a different place in life. That we don't walk after the flesh, but walk after the spirit. So when we start walking after the spirit, what does that life look like? But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have cruci crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. The world system and the religious system has people competing against each other. But the word of God calls us to peace, calls us to love, calls us to, to love our enemies like we read earlier in Matthew chapter 5. The Bible says, love those who hate you and pray for those who spitefully use you. I've had people spitefully use you. Has anybody here had people spitefully use them in their life? Have people used you? Has the world done stuff to you that you didn't want? And God wants to set you free. And the Bible says, the Bible calls us to a high holy standard to say, that's all right, blow them a kiss and forgive them. But there's nothing worth hanging on to in this life. Any unforgiveness, any bitterness, any anger, any resentment, God will set you free if you give it to him. And say, Amen. all you have to say is, God, Amen, you've seen bro. what happened. Amen, brother. You've seen what happened, and, and I want to be released from this stuff. Yes. Because the Bible says there's an invisible weight of sin that we carry around until we meet Christ. Until yes. by faith we go to God and say, Lord, please forgive me of my sin and make me a child of God. Amen. And he says he'll do it for you. He's faithful. That God loves you so much. Listen. If you all knew how much God truly loved you, you'd come to him today. Amen. He desires to be close with you, for you to know him by faith. And again, the Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. But if anyone comes to him, we must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That if we make time for God in our lives every day, that he will reward you with blessing. He will reward you with spiritual nourishment. He will reward you with revelation of himself 
beyond your greatest imagination. This is not a fairy tale. This isn't a cleverly devised story. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ that has the power to save your eternal soul. Again, this is the God of Abraham, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he loves you so much. And he desires to set you free. How many people continue to do things that they don't want to do? The Bible says a man's sin binds him like cords or ties him like ropes so that you're not free to do what you want. Yes. So if you're, you're bound to drugs, you're bound to alcohol, you're bound to sexual immorality, you're bound to fits of rage and anger. The Bible says that the power of Christ will release you from that stuff today. And if you want prayer, you step right up here and we'll be glad to pray for you and believe God to do a wonderful miracle in your life. Amen. And listen, the religious things of this world don't have the power to save you. No pendant, no cross, no statue, no religious thing, no religious rug to pray on. It's the Almighty God when we come to Him and profess Jesus Christ as Lord, that you will be saved. Let's go to Romans chapter 10. How are we saved? The Bible says that we are undeserving, but God in His, in His love desires to have you in heaven for eternity. There really is a heaven and there really is a hell. And we're here because we care about you. God has done things for us. And so we're out here on this beautiful Sunday to tell the people of Boston that this God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, loves you very, very much. That in all creation, every animal in the ocean, every animal on this planet, every building and all the other stuff, doesn't matter like you matter to Jesus Christ. He loves you so much. Amen. And the gift of salvation is free. It's a free gift. We can't give enough money to the poor. We can't do enough uh, good, righteous acts to save us. It's by faith in God through Christ. We can go around doing all uh, uh, good, goodwill towards men and all that, but it's not enough. It's not gonna turn the, yeah. It's not gonna bring you to heaven. The Bible says that there are all different ways that people try and get to heaven. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And that no man, no man, no man comes to the Father but through me. Come to Jesus Christ today. Romans 10, 9. If you declare with your mouth, this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where our, our faith, we put it into action. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. Praise God. God bless you, man. For it is God with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. I've heard people say, don't miss heaven by 18 inches. What does that mean, don't miss heaven by 18 inches? The distance from your heart to your head. You can't receive this gospel with your analytical mind. It's not enough. It's by our heart that we believe for salvation. And it's by, sh by speaking out of our mouth that we say, God, all right, I believe you. I believe you raised Jesus Christ from the dead. I believe you love me and care about me and want to know me for eternity in heaven. In this world, no matter how beautiful it gets, the Bible says in heaven there are streets of gold. And then Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. In my Father's house there are many mansions. And if I go there, then I will come back to take you with me to be there forever. Praise God. Romans chapter 10 verse 12. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all. And richly blesses all who call on him. If you call on God, He will bless you. He wants to know you. He wants to bless you and change your life. 13. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. The good news is that Jesus Christ is Lord 
and that he has overcome the world. That there's nothing too big that's happened to you that you can't recover from by the power of Christ. And no, no matter how much weed you smoke or crack you snort or anything, all, all of the, the world stuff, all of the alcohol. Listen, I've been there drinking every day, smoking, try, trying to find true peace and true uh, happiness, maybe some contentment in these things, but nothing compares to the power of Christ. And it is for you and it is for today. And if you see everything that's happening in the world right now, all the protests, all the violence, all the calamity, all, all, all the, the Bible says that these will be, these things are happening because it's the last hour of time. And Jesus Christ is getting ready to come back to the earth. And it's up to us to be ready. It's your individual decision for Christ that matters. I can't save you. Hey, listen, I have all the faith in the world. It's not my faith that will get you there. The Bible says that every person has a measure of faith that we have to put to use. And that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So it's, it's by these things that we come to God. And salvation is the free gift that he desires to bless you with. But it doesn't stop there. If you come to faith in God through Christ, and you continue to persist, and you're in your Bible every day, and you're praying and you're faithful, and you slam the door on sin and press in towards God, he will radically change your life through the power of Christ. What does that mean? The Bible says that the Holy Spirit desires to be in you, that God's Spirit wants to dwell inside you and fill you and change your heart and change your mind and help you to get rid of all the sinful things of the world that don't matter and that take away from your life. I remember when I wasn't living for God, I would seek for this stuff. I, I wanted peace. I was always looking for the next thing or, or turning to people who couldn't give me an answer. But when enough of the world stole from me and insulted me and, and, and I was in such a broken, fragile state, I said, God, you're the only one that can help me right now. I've tried. Nobody down here, nobody down here can help me. Can I pray for you? And he was faithful. And he answered my prayers. And he set me on the rock to stand, that is Jesus Christ. This isn't some fairy tale. This book right here, the Holy Bible, has stood the test of time for 2,000 years. And every gen what's different about this Holy Book is that it speaks to every generation. These words carry the power of God. The Bible says the Word of God is alive and active, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword, that it, that it cuts to the heart so deep, sharper than, than, uh, than any two-edged sword, dividing between the soul and spirit of a person, the joints and marrow, and it judges the thoughts and the intents of our heart. No other holy book or claim to be holy book carries this power or has gone throughout the world in this measure. Listen, what do we have right now with technology in this day is that the gospel is being preached in every nation. And the Bible says once this gospel is preached to every nation, then the end will come. We're living in the last hour of time. If you get in the Bible and you read Bible prophecy, you'll see that all this is, is about to be up. That time is about to be up. The Bible calls it the end of the age. Not the end of the world, but Jesus is gonna come back to set up his kingdom on earth. The Bible says that when Jesus comes back, that we will rule and reign with him, that we will have such places with God if we turn to him right now <laughs> there's nothing in this life that should be able to, to come between us and God what's that here. say that again fear here fear 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 yeah how did you combat your fear how did I combat my fear I pressed in listen I was afraid I was broke. I came to net zero in my dollars, and then I was thousands of dollars in debt. I was so lost. I was bound by sin and addiction and fear and anxiety and all this stuff.
but I slammed the door on sin and I said, okay, God, you're my last resort. I need you. I need your power. I need your truth. And I pressed in. I read the Bible every day. I prayed every day. I started to learn about fasting and prayer that, that super, that, that basically speeds all that, that up. So I came to God and thinking I'm still going to fail. Trust God. There's, there's a carnal, sin, sinful nature that we have in our bodies. We have thoughts that, that we have that says we're going to fail all the time. But you know that? The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So to overcome these thoughts, to overcome fear, to overcome anxiety and depression and all the voices that are, are trying to suppress you and depress you, you speak the word of God, you read this book out loud, that as it is the written word of God, and the Bible says that faith will come alive in your heart. But you, your name, the Bible calls us to press in, name, to continue in these press, roles, press, that it doesn't happen all at once. And there's there's a parable of the sower. So wait till these helicopters. the word of God seed that the seed of God's word that each of you are receiving a measure of God's word in your heart today but what you do with that seed is important the Bible says a farmer went out to sow his seed as he was scattering the seed some some fell along the path listen to this word you decide which soil that your heart is going to be you decide where the seed of God's word today is going to be in your life. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell along the rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the, the plants were scorched, and they withered away because they had no root. Other seed fell along thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still, other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop 160 or 30 times what is sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Jesus was not talking about your physical ears right here. Listen how deep the word of God is. Jesus was not talking about your physical ears to hear what he was saying. Of course everybody could hear what he was saying. He was talking about the ears of your heart. The Bible says that your spirit, your spiritual ears, is how you're going to understand the Word of God and how you're going to know the voice of the Holy Spirit when He speaks to you. When I was preaching down the street this winter, I said, does anyone know the name, does anyone know a rap artist by the name Kanye West? Obviously, people know Kanye West, but, but he's preaching the same thing. He's saying Jesus is King. And as I'm preaching that, a girl walking by has Kanye West playing in her headphones and she rips out her headphones and she keeps walking and she now she's listening I see her pull out her headphones but I didn't know she was listening to Kanye West I know what was happening I was just preaching Jesus Christ as Lord my dad walked down the street with her told her about the Lord she took it as a sign from God that he was speaking to her and that she needed to get right with God and gave her life to Christ on the spot but how could she be walking by, listening to Kanye West in her earbud, and me just say out of my mouth, does anyone know a rap artist by the name Kanye West? And just say, we're preaching the same message, Jesus is King. Only God can do that. Only he could have that set up for her life, that she would have new life. Back to the parable of the sower. That's one God. The Father shows himself in the form of the Spirit, the Son, this is what the parable of the sower means. Listen to then what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in their heart. So the Bible says that the word of God is being sown in your heart today. But what happens? 
Jesus, the Satan comes to take away God's word. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes, because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it out. The deceitfulness of wealth, saying that if you have more money, it'll be all right. That's not enough. No matter how much money you have, if you don't have Christ in your heart, it won't matter. Money can't change you. Money can't buy happiness. True joy comes from the Lord. God wants to give you true joy in your heart today. God wants to know you and bless you. I'm telling you, bro, when you go home, really just cry out but the seed falling on the good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what it is sown. So the seed of God's word today, you who are receiving, allow it to take deep root in your heart. Get in the word of God every day. Get in the Holy Bible and, and step by step Place your faith in Christ every day when you wake up. If you're suddenly receiving God's word today with joy, but tomorrow you wake up and you say, man, I don't feel it. I don't feel what I felt yesterday. Press in by faith and say, all right, God, I'm going to give this another go. Day after day, I'm going to come to you. I'm going to believe you. I'm going to trust your word. I'm going to read the Bible, which is your word. And I'm going to pray and believe you to change my life. Hey, listen. I am for people. I love people. God loves people. My God, Jesus Christ, loves people and died on the cross for their sins. I don't agree with anything that happened to the man That's in Minnesota. And these peaceful pro protests are good. But no matter how much people protest, it will never change the sinful nature like God will. By the power of Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit. And he desires to do that for you. He desires to come in and live on the inside of you and fill you with the Holy Spirit and totally change your mind. God desires that you would know his voice by faith. When God started speaking to me in 2018, it was like I could hear him on the inside of me, but I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know how to understand it. I didn't, I, I just said like, I, I know I heard you God, but I don't know what that means or what you're trying to tell me. And the Bible says that that type of relationship is what God wants to have with you, that he speaks to you, and that you listen, and you obey his word. God, you'll never hear a thought, and you'll never hear a voice that contradicts the word of God, that will be God's voice. You'll hear, you'll hear deceptive spirits, you'll, hear thought, you'll have thoughts like, go kill yourself, or all this stuff, but Jesus Christ is the author of peace, and he wants to give you peace that surpasses all understanding. The Bible says there's a peace that surpasses all understanding. That no matter what situation that you're facing in your life, God will fill you with his peace. And his peace is enough to change your life and to give you rest. Jesus said, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. When you come to Christ, he takes off the weight of sin and he gives you rest, he gives you peace, he gives you hope, he gives you love, he gives you joy, and he desires to bless you. If anyone protesting today can hear me, Jesus Christ is Lord and he desires to bless you. Praise God, A peaceful assembly, whatever you wanna call it. We're here preaching the good news of the gospel of Christ. That Jesus came, fully God, fully man, that he was nailed to the cross. A, a, a criminal's death on the cross. And that God raised him from the dead. And the Bible says that that same spirit who raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. He will quicken your mortal bodies. That new life by faith I've been preaching to you all afternoon is what we're talking about. That God desires to quicken you on the inside out. 
to give you new life starting from the inside out. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's right, brother. The Bible calls our faith more precious than gold. If someone dropped a million dollars at your house or in front of you and said, here, this is yours, here's a million dollars, here's ten million dollars, whatever, it's no substitute for the power of Christ. It's no substitute for a relationship with God. We just read in the Bible that the deceitfulness of wealth chokes out the word of God. That you can hear Jesus Christ as Lord and say, yeah, I believe that God. But tomorrow you wake up and you're back to the grind. All you care about is money. All you care about is the riches of the world. But you never come to God through Christ. It will never help. It's not enough. There really is a heaven and there really is a hell. And we, the Bible calls us to repent from our sin and turn to God. And that He will write our name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Praise God. Can you see what's going on over here? Yeah, we see. This is fucking 2020. It's 2020, right. sir. You're, you're, you're Jesus from fucking 2,000 years ago and doing shit. Why are you upset, man? Why am I upset? Yeah. Because I study religion and I know God what God loves about. you. God loves yeah, you. And that's, that's, what, nice. that's not what we're preaching why you, today. Why are you filled with why are you religion filled with anger? Why do you have to be out here doing this right now when that why is you going filled with anger? Right over there? Why are you filled with anger? The power of Christ because I don't love Jesus, okay? Is what and, and his whole, he's a fucking stable. He was God in flesh. Bro. No, he wasn't. He was God in flesh. No, well, that that's, isn't. That's what you don't believe. That, no, that's what, what the facts are. The this narrow is 2020. and wide gates. You're just upset, man. God is real. No God is changing lives every day. There's billions of Christians around the world. There's billions of Christians around the world. You've had 5,000 people, two fish? Yeah. Really? The Bible says you can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gates. Were they whales? The highway to hell is broad, and its gate is wide. Well, they were just fish. Were they whales? The highway to hell is broad, and its gate is wide. They were just fish. Well, many who choose to know fish. I don't know the exact way. Do some reading other than reading the Bible. I'll read the Bible. The 2,000 year old dusty fucking book has been disproven across the board. Because you know that God's real. Because you're mad because there's something like you in your heart. Stand out here and talk this bullshit. You're mad because well, there's that's going on over there. Because there's something no, in your I'm heart that's life. convicting you. Convicting and that's God. nothing's it's convicting you. It's God. No, it's you're intelligence. You're convicted of your sin. It's intelligence. And you need to turn what from your sin. What level of education? You need to turn from your sin. What level of education? Or you'll go to hell. What level of education? You need to turn from your sin. Do you have a university degree? If you don't turn from your sin, you will go to hell. Do you have a university degree? Yes or no? You will go to hell. Do you have a university degree? I'm in college right now, but that doesn't matter. Oh, but you don't have a degree. Doesn't matter. Where are you degree. going to college? I and what are you majoring well, in? Hallelujah. Why do you care? Because you don't know shit. Uh, that's why. That's <laughs> why you have to go to college to know stuff. God, no, not necessarily. So you're smart because you go to college. God no, that's the only brother. reason you're no, smart. No, I've been to college. I've also reason. lived over God half the world. God called us to preach the gospel. What did you say? I've also lived over the entire lives. world. And he wants so, to change so, your life. Many, there, there are Jesus, many, there are many, there, there are many scientists. There are many scientists. There are people. There are doctors who believe in Jesus. They've been all over the world. They're stupid for that. Well, that's what you lie about Jesus and who he was. That's your opinion. And who he is. If you don't know science, do not care. If they don't, they don't. They don't correspond. Yes, they do. Okay. It's a canon. So you can. So every building, every building. You see right here. Then you have a creation. Then you have a beginning. Yeah, it had a creation. So, so they're called, they're called engineers. Yeah, those. That's, that's what they so everything do. you see has a beginning. So I can say this world has a beginning. All the I can say this world has a beginning. The Bible Just like you see everything has a beginning. Where did it come everything, from? Where did, where did you come from? Where do I come God. from? Yeah. I, you, bro. Praise God. See, you can't, you can't debate. Yes, I can. You can't debate. You want to Jesus talk about three desires to change you and make you talk new. Talk about Charles Darwin then. Is that what you want Charles to talk Darwin, about? Charles Darwin, he was a racist. He was a racist? He was a racist. He was a racist. Really? Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Why? Have you read his stuff? The word of God yes. is eternal. And what did he write about? He wrote about, he wrote the about, about the Lord he, will he wrote about how preservation of how favored races. He wrote about the preservation of favored races. I'm not saying he wasn't a racist. Read his book about Where is he from? 
Philippians 4. You don't know where he's from. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. You need to turn from your sin. Let everyone see that you are considerate in what you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. And if you don't turn from your sin, tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. You're not even American. Then you will experience God's peace. South America, from America, which exceeds anything which we can understand. I don't want to hear this. Get the okay. fuck out of his it's face okay. while I tighten you up. It's okay. hey, hey, oh, you see what he's doing? Yes, I see exactly, so what, the the what, the I see exactly what the fuck he's doing. I see exactly what the fuck he's doing. That's why I'm got about three seconds before I shadow you up. God love hey, Get out of his face. You ain't gonna do a motherfucking thing. Really? And your fucking dog. Okay. You see what he's doing? I don't give a fuck about him. Damn, damn. The man preaching the word of God. Yeah, he's preaching the, the word of God. Well, that's going on out there. What the fuck? Give a fuck. Turn from, your sin, you gotta turn, turn from your sin, man. You got to turn from your sin. Turn from your sin. You got to turn from your sin. What sins have you committed? I've, I've committed Because I know that no, nobody. I've committed many sins. I know no one's perfect. Have you had an abortion? Have, have, have I had an abortion? Have you fucked a married woman? I've, what sins have you committed? I've, I've done many things. I've done sexual and more things. I've done, I've done things that are ugly, man, but God saved my life. I've repented in my sin. I believe in repentance. That's what I believe in. I believe we can repent. And that's what you're called to, man. That's what God is calling you to do. You're called to repent. God wants you to repent. You're called to repent. God loves you, man. I'm not repenting. God, God loves you. Why don't you, you know, not repent to How about to God? Why don't you repent to Allah? How about that? I don't believe in Allah. Why? Because I believe in the same tradition. No, it doesn't. He comes from the Abrahamic tradition God's word. but Muhammad, Muhammad it's Muhammad's teaching okay then how about Moses I, never I believe in Moses desire. teaching Listen, no you don't I do believe in Moses no, teaching he wrote, the, Jesus. He, he, wrote the, he wrote the Pentateuch he wrote the Pentateuch, he wrote the Pentateuch. Jesus no said, say, if they, if Jesus, they Jesus said Moses, Jesus said I've come not to abolish the law but to fulfill the law here's the bottom line you shouldn't be doing this shit while that's going on out there that's not the bottom line that's a fucking disrespect to black people you got that I'm white you're white and I'm Hispanic I'm disrespect to me so That's not no disrespect. I love, I believe in protest. I believe in protest. I'm okay with protest. I actually, I told, I, 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 I totally, so actually, bro, I, I literally totally forgot to wear a mask. I got, I told, I have, I would have my sweatshirt. And God's done something for us, and we want him to do it for you. The Bible says that anyone who hates us, we're to pray for them. God bless you, man. I love you. We're preaching right. the gospel of truth, yeah, which good. is Thank love. You. Thank you. Brother. God, God bless so you. loved the world that he gave his one and only son. <laughs> and that mad? believes in it's him. Just, bro, Shall sometimes when you, when you preach the gospel, have people get mad. Are you with him? When you come to yeah, faith not, in Christ, yeah, I'm, I'm you have recording. eternal life starting now, not when we I'll die. The Bible says the sting yeah, we, of we, death yeah, is taken away. And nothing in this world can take our souls when we belong to Christ. Praise God. No matter what we have in this world, it's all temporary. It's all passing away. But if we come to the Lord Crazy world right now. and we Dude. tell him that we trust him and we're going to pray, we're going to preach the word, we're going to we're going to believe what he says, your Did your whole life will change. Too? I didn't even know this was happening. In 2018, yeah, my life we became radically changed by the power of God. kind of came late. But I knew it wasn't religion. Religion, religion had nothing for me. You can go to the most beautiful church. You can have the nicest gold cross on your neck. You can have the nicest statue. None of it is substitute for the power of Christ in your life. It's by faith. The Bible says we walk by faith, not by sight. So it's nothing that we see that is going to bring us eternal life. But it's the Lord God Almighty who desires to deliver us. Set us free by the power of God. It caught my attention in the early. name of Jesus Christ. About, um, the Bible says if you pray, if you ask like, anything, if you ask God for anything in the name of Jesus Christ and according to his will, yeah, that it will be done. Not that it might be done. Not that part of it will be done. God said, call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you do not know. What a great promise. God said, call just every, everyone who calls on my that's name not, not what will God be saying. saved. God wants us to be in a marriage Anyone that who calls on me, I will show them great and mighty people, things that they do not know. No How are you? Families, like people, God bless you. So many Hold on, let me record this real quick. Hey, hey, man. Hey, yes, my name is Stephen Hall, and I have a hallelujah for all y'all out there. Jesus Christ is a lover of rockers, but he's 
getting shut off too because he's not staying as he is and he's oh, a creep. No, he's the but he, yeah, he's a savior of us all. But he, you he's know, the savior, he, man. He let us he's know that we're the real creeps as well as him. Amen. Right, we, we can't do anything without Christ. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ, Amen, the brother. same. Amen, yesterday, brother. today, and forever. Yeah, man, God is unchanging. Here, God's not mad at you. He loves you. He wants to forgive you. He wants to bless you. But unless you make that decision for him, it can't happen. My preaching won't do anything for you unless the rubber meets the road and you take a step of faith and say, okay, God, I need you. I know I'm a sinner. I believe you that you raised Jesus from the dead and that you come to him by faith. And the Bible says that if any man be in Christ, and man meaning man or woman, if any person be in Christ, behold, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, all things become new. I saw all the old things in my life fade away and change. When I started seeking God, all my friends disappeared. That's how you know that these these temporary things, when we surround ourselves with a bunch of friends and a bunch of money and a bunch of drugs and a bunch of alcohol and a bunch of security and a nice home, that if we don't have Christ, we still have an emptiness in our heart. That if we don't know God, none of it's going to matter. And in all creation, all the birds of the air, all the fish of the sea, all the land creatures, none of them matter to God like you do. The Bible says we are created in the likeness and the image of God. Father, I pray that you will lead him to the right direction in every single area of his life, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, sure. that you will... If anyone heard the word of God today to go, Lord God, and wants to be right saved, now, wants that new life, life. I want to give you an invitation to, to come and pray with me. I've never Jesus done this before in preaching open air. But if God's tugging God, on your heart, and, and you say, I want to know God. I want to. I want my place in heaven. I want to be forgiven of my sin. I want a new life. Then come up and we'll pray right now. We're going to pray a simple childlike prayer of faith coming to God. Amen. I'm just doing it to make it easier for everybody else. Amen. This brother says he's going to come and pray. And anyone else who wants to pray? I've already been saved. He's already been saved. He's saved. He's a new creation in Christ. I'm doing it to make it easier for someone else. And then we can come back. Yeah. Amen. Anyone yeah, who's a little good. timid, yeah. come up and, no, and, and take a step of faith. I don't want to join them. They're not too far away, though. Give us a what, what, what? what organization? Just Christian, man. Just Christian. Just we're, we're not with the believer, people. just disciple. You've got a social distance. Don't bring people into you. They can, they can stand you don't right have there. to. You don't want to. Yeah, you, you, have you, you don't have to. If you want to pray right here, we'll pray right here. We'll, we don't have to hold hands or, no, or kiss on the cheek or nothing like that. But if you want to pray, you come right up. And Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me on the earth, then I'll be ashamed of you See, before my, my Father who's in heaven. Room. We can line up. But if you, if you name the name of Christ on earth, then, then I'll stand with you in heaven before the Almighty God. So we'll give, we'll give about 60 more seconds for anyone who wants to pray. And anyone who doesn't have enough we have to courage, speak. I you can pray where you are. Away, bro. That thing's and if, even we'll, if you we'll don't even we'll, we'll, say we'll it out of your it. mouth, you we'll pray it in your heart, God bit. will hear you. I'll carry it, bro. But the Bible so, so. does command us okay. to yeah. confess with our mouth that just, Jesus really is wanna, Lord. I really want to hop in for like a little bit. So let's pray. Right if that's you and you want to be saved, say these words. Father God, I know I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I believe that you raised Jesus from the dead. And that he died for my sins. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and give me the power to live for you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and make me a new creature. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. God bless you, city of Boston. We love you. Praise God and God bless you.